because you've been in radio for so long. What do you think about the state of music right now? The state of music? Yeah. It's thriving. Oh. How? Excuse you. No, that's fine. Tell me exactly why it's thriving. Okay. Put away your chef hat for a I'm, sec. This I, has nothing to do with being Listen, a chef. Listen, the state of music depends on who's listening. Okay. Okay? You know, people are consuming... No. Children are consuming their music on TikTok. Are they really? People like you and I uh-huh. are still album buyers. Did yeah. you go out and buy the new Foo Fighters album? Uh, no. But you're aware of it. Yeah. You know they have a new album. Yes. They're promoting it everywhere. Sure. You're the kind of guy, like me, who's going to possibly download the new Foo Fighters album. Or buy it on And listen wax. it from beginning to end. Correct. Right? The proper way to listen to music. People don't do that anymore. People right. before us. Le children. Le Gen Z. Right. They don't listen to music the way that you and I listen to. The good thing about it is that our music is being used in bits in, dare I say, influencing like videos, right? Sure. You're talking about like samples or what? Bits, like 30 seconds of a song, right? Right. So guys like T-Pain and... Uh, oh, man, T-Pain. You know, College. Fleetwood Mac. Oh, yeah. Dreams. These songs are seeing a resurgence. Janet Jackson's album just went platinum or number one the other day. Because a bunch of kids are doing fucking dances to her songs on TikTok. That's crazy. So. What was the song? Sorry to cut you off. Go ahead, go. Uh, oh, yeah. It was with Otis Redding. When Kanye came out with yeah. that song, Otis, uh-huh. like, I don't know, it was like 10 years right. ago already. And the beginning was with uh, an Otis Redding sample. Captain. I know. And everyone's just like, who is this artist, Otis Who's Redding? Otis I mean, Redding. I mean, oh, my God. And it's one of the most legendary soul singers of all time. Sasha. Who's Otis Redding? Do yeah. you know him? Did he party with us? Was he at Wall on Tuesday? <laughs> what is Wall? Oh my God. It's a club. It's like a really cool club back in the day. Oh, back in the right. day. Right. Okay. I have to go. I'm doing a podcast. Oh, why? Because I do hot shit. Bye. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's how I feel about the state of music. I mean, it just depends on who's listening. Nothing is dead. Nothing is dying. Rock and roll isn't fucking dead, guys. Everybody relax. I hate that shit. Rock and roll is dead. Rock and roll. Rock, rock and roll is not dead. Rock and roll is not. Fact, rock and roll is not dead. But I think the state of hip hop is kind of concerning. If you no no, because you're listening to the wrong hip hop. I'm I'm I listen to hip hop to? To, today. That's good. But like the what? J. J Cole, Excellent. Logic, great. Yeah, Kendrick, obviously. Obviously, but you when know, was the Joel, last time Kendrick Joel, came out with an album, bro? I know, but I mean, his fir- his three album, the last three albums he came out with were fucking amazing. I mean, you could build an entire career off the those three albums. The entire album of Damn plays I mean, on replay in my home. Which, because it's incredible. It's beautiful. Joel Ortiz. For God's sakes, he won like a, didn't he win like a, a not a Nobel Peace Prize for Damn. No, I'm being serious. He won like one of those big ass awards. Can I, somebody I, I, go I, I, producer, big ass awards? <laughs> This big isn't like your situation. We producer's don't have we don't have a computer that we look up shit. And oh, you think I have a producer? Yeah. No. I don't. You don't? You need Nick? He's available. Do you want to know? Who <laughs> I am not available. Do you want to know who the producer is? Oh yeah. I Can write you, everything. You should give Nick some tips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, man. Pull Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, I know. I know. Boom. Pull well, Nip- Nipsey also was incredible. Oh my gosh. I mean, he was amazing. Stop. So good. Locksmith, also very so good. good. And then there's these other groups that I list that I'm addicted to. Like, I love, uh, you know, like uh, the Black Pumas. And I'm not uh, aware. there's a jazz band, uh, Kamazi Washington. That's cool. um, have you ever listened to Kamazi Washington? No. You play that shit here. Woo! Bring in a sex it. Kamazi Washington is amazing. You would love him. Yeah, I mean, we play a lot of old school hip hop here. That's a great. lot, a lot, a lot. And I do that on purpose because. The idea of the restaurant is like you're hanging out at my house. Tribe? So, of course, Tribe. Tribe, Outkast. Farside. Jay-Z, Farside. Um, Eric B and Rakim, a lot of Eric B and Rakim. Yeah. Um, a lot of Rakim on his own. Uh, I mean, it's... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's a, I have a weird mix of music that I love. Mm-hmm. You know, Muddy Waters, John Coltrane, Miles Davis, and then obviously like older hip hop. Uh, you know... You see, I love all that, and then I love, 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 love Chris Stapleton, Willie Nelson. Yeah. I'm a huge Tom Petty fan. A lot of people don't know that. Ted Nugent. 
Bruce Springsteen? I love Bruce. Bruce is like... He's... I have a connection yeah. with Bruce Springsteen. You do? I love Bruce Springsteen. Do you have a story? I wish. No. no. Uh, just like one of my favorite kitchen jobs ever is when I discovered Springsteen because one of my cooks was a huge Springsteen fan that we're actually like very good friends now. And that was the first time I had ever... The story's more. The first time I ever had a... Uh, I had a vinyl, right? When I first started getting into vinyls, I was living in my grandparents' house, and I was cleaning out the closet. That was not What was your closet. first record? That one. It was Bruce Springsteen, okay. 75 through 85. It was a live album, mm -hmm. and it actually belonged to my uncle when he was a kid. He's, he's passed away since, um, and I discovered it, like, right after he had passed away. Mm -hmm. And I, my grandfather had an old record player that was part of, like, you know, the three-piece that it's, like, got a tape deck, um, radio, and then the vinyl on top. Mm -hmm. So I fixed it because it was broken. And that's when I got into records. And that was my first record was that Springsteen record. And now I have all of them. I have them framed on walls and shit because I think his music was incredible. I, I have vinyl too. Not too much. Yeah. Because I, I see what it does to a person. What do you mean? Uh, Zog has about two giant Storage warehouse units? Yeah. unit things filled with and he just won't let go of it. So. I have a friend that has 53,000 records. And he still spins on vinyl. Which I'm is trying to get him to spin vinyl on air one day. I don't know if he'll do it, but... Yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah, he's great at that. I For me, you know, like, music is one of those things, obviously, it's very personal. It's very, like... I just love the memories that come with songs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, the Strokes, when that album came out, This Is It, the, out, the whole thing. Yeah. I remember when that first came out, I was like, my God, this is cool. I like how this makes me feel. Yeah. Uh, I remember when the Heat were in the playoffs. Fuck. Is that ten. basketball? Yep. Okay. Ten years ago. I think it was ten years ago when Jay-Z and Kanye came out with that album. And that one track that they played Paris. all. Yeah. You remember they played it four times at the show? I don't remember Did that. you ever go to the show? No. They kept, just kept playing it. I just, I just it. remember that me and... Pasolito Papi. Or do you know who Pasolito Papi is? Yes. Yeah, he's famous. I've um, never met him. He's here now. Where? Um, downstairs, working. Really? Yeah. Can I meet him? Sure. Great. Um, we used to always, we would go to the playoff games, and then after the game, or any Heat game, we would listen to that album, and then after, we would go to Watch Purdy Lounge. We would go to Purdy Lounge. Like, oh my gosh, right we after. didn't go to Purdy Lounge. I know. It was just like a thing, and that just, like, that whole album reminds me of that time period so much. And I don't love Kanye, right? Uh, and I don't. I actually don't love Jay Z either. Mm -hmm. But I that album just it reminds me of like that time, right. and I thought it was it's pretty awesome that it does that. Yeah, that's that's the beauty of music for me. The Beastie Boys will forever be my oh yeah first like my go to. I'm having a bad day. I'll listen to the Beastie Boys. Then I'll go to LCD Sound System. Then I'll listen to Oscar G. Mm. Um, to me, one of the most gifted local musicians is oscar g really oscar g's music is transcending it is spiritual um spiritual yes have you ever heard his new single pray no you need to listen to that i'm gonna he released it right at the beginning of covid um i love oscar g i think uh, oscar g doesn't get enough credit um he's a god in brooklyn um he's just He's amazing. His music for me is the kind of music I do a lot of writing. I, I write a lot of commercials. I write episodes for our show. Um, I create a lot. I'm asked to create like on the spot a lot. And I will put my headphones on and tune into Oscar G and I'm in a different world. Amazing. Um, he, you know, I, I'm, we're blessed that we have people in the music industry. Like, obviously, there's the Estefans. There's, you know, Casey and the Sunshine Band. There's uh, Marilyn Manson, who's from Fort Lauderdale. Then there's Pitbull. Then there's Rick Ross. Uh, there's Trina. There's Trick. There's all this amazing music. But what a lot of people tend to forget, and I get really fucking annoyed, is that there was a specific dance sound that was born in the club scene in Miami that doesn't get the respect it deserves. And there's very few DJs that understand that. And I had Are you you talking about like Miami bass music or? I'm not just talking about Miami bass music. I'm talking about like house dance. Yeah. That these international DJs would come here, listen, take it back and create these monster hits. Hmm. And 
that music to me is there's something there's a taste to it like you could you could taste like uh the you know what is that that shh in the air um you could taste the the vodka on, <laughs> on people's skin you know you lick a girl you know they're been at a club and lick the girl's shoulder and it tastes like vodka it's been a while but yeah same here and <laughs> I'm from Miami, bitch. And there's that music to me is is delicious. And then Miami bass music, bro. Have you ever like honestly like have you ever listened to? I'm MC Shadi and I gotta be tall. Yeah, of course. Bam bam, ba da ba ba ba, ba da ba ba ba, ba 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 ta 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 ya. Like that shit to me, brother. Give me a pair of booty shorts right now. Let's go in. And there's something beautiful about that time. And I know it was a very, you know, it was murky. It was, you know, two life crew and, and fighting for, to have parental, like, you know, permission to have like bad words on their, in their album. Fighting with, you know, Buck Navarro was like a song that I knew in, in junior high. That kind of music is part of the fabric of the culture here in Miami mm-hmm. and it doesn't get the respect it deserves. There are so many records right now that are sampling this music and they're just it, 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 but if you listen or you hear an interview like for example, one of my favorite interviews currently living on the net is with Pharrell Williams and he was interviewed by uh DJ EFN uh Drink Champs. And Pharrell says the music that influenced him was Miami bass music. Right. You listen to it. I mean, even with the DJ Laz music, I mean, mm-hmm. like, what the fuck, man? That's fucking DJ Laz. Yeah. Is he a pain in the ass? Yes, all day. But he is part of this history, and there's so much awesomeness to that music and so much nostalgia. But it was it was played, and it was loved, and it, it was something. There was something there. And I, and I always hope that my kids get that feeling from the music they're listening to now. Because I don't like to be prejudiced against what they're listening to. You know what I mean? It's tough. Listen. I have a hard time not judging people on music. I mean, does my kid listen to... Uh, the other day she goes, she goes, Alexa! And we're like... She goes, uh, Alexa! Play Mary Jane, Last Dance, Tom Patty. She's 10. And she knows all the words. Oh, that's amazing. And she turned right back around and be like, Alexa, play Boys in the Hood, NWA. <laughs> <laughs> you know?